everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am talking all about how to go from fanfic writer to professional, traditionally published writer. This is by popular demand because so many of you have watched my bad fanfic writing habits that you should break video and have requested more fanfic themed content. And as many of you may know, I used to write fan fiction. I'm a huge believer in fan fiction, not only as something fun and valuable worth doing, but a wonderful potential springboard for people who do want to become professional writers. I think there's a lot that you can learn from writing fan fiction, and in fact, I have a video on that as well, which I will link to down below but I'm gonna cover some of that here. This is going to be a pretty practical video about some of the pitfalls of being a fanfic writer to consider when wanting to transition into writing professional fiction, some steps to take to make that transition, and some things that you might want to bear in mind answering or trying to answer the big question of to erase your fanfic profile or to keep it and use it to help you in your fiction career. There's a lot to discuss here and we're going to dig in right now. So first, as I mentioned, I genuinely think there are some very specific things that fan fiction can teach a writer by osmosis just by writing fic. You can get pretty good at these things. I consider these things certainly some of my strengths, and I think it's always worth pointing out these positive things so that you can then address some of the weaknesses. And that bad fanfic writing video is definitely one to watch, some things you might be doing in your writing that it helps to work on to embark on a professional career. But first, some of the things that I think fic writers are usually pretty darn good at include character-driven work, character archetypes, identifying popular tropes that readers love, conflict and drama, though this one has a slight caveat, and romance and shipping. This is of course assuming you do write shipping fic, but the, I feel like the majority of popular fanfic does have some shipping in it. And so the good news about a lot of these is that a lot of these are very, very helpful for writing commercial fiction, especially the one about kind of understanding character archetypes and popular tropes, tropes that people like eat up, and of course the drama and the romance. These are all essential ingredients in creating compelling commercial fiction. Now some of the pitfalls, some of the areas of craft that might be lacking because you just don't quite need these for fanfic. These are things to think about and concentrate on working on in yourself in order to get your original fiction up to scratch. And these pitfalls include um, backstory and world building and starting in the wrong place. So what I mean by this is the thing about fanfic is you really kind of need to drop right into the action, so to speak. You don't have to do all of the backstory world building work because your reader is from fandom. They already know all of the essential things they need to know. So for example, if you're writing Harry Potter fan fiction, you don't need to explain what Hogwarts is. You don't need to explain who Voldemort is or even what an Auror is. You just go right into the story. And in original fiction, you can't do that because you have to build all of that for your world and artfully and carefully introduce these elements to your reader so that they have that foundation of the story so that they want to follow it. And when you're looking for resources to learn more about this, I do recommend looking up any advice on starting in the right place. This can be a great place to look for uh, great ways to start your book and where to start your book. Also, of course, looking up backstory, world building, developing those tools of building your own fleshed out, real feeling world and the world of the characters. And the next one, the big one that I find most fanfic writers really struggle with when they're transitioning into original fiction, I can often spot a fanfic writer because of it, and that is story structure and pacing. A hallmark of fanfic, and yeah, I read tons of it, and I loved it in fanfic, is lots and lots of navel gazing about the day-to-day -day things that these characters are going through, just showing these characters having really cute interactions and having fun on the page or having a lot of angst on the page, but it's kind of plotting useless stuff, meaning it's stuff that doesn't 
propel a plot forward. But most people are reading fanfic for character studies, for just singing their favorite characters in a lot of scenarios that are kind of, they spark joy and they're fun to read. But compelling, well-paced fiction that follows good story structure can't plod through a ton of navel gazing. I find a lot of fanfic writers tend to write very long when they write novel length fiction and large swaths of it just can be cut. It's unnecessary extra stuff. Also, I have found therefore, I did this myself by the way, most of these things I'm doing I'm calling out myself as well, because you don't have to hit specific story beats, traditional story beats in fan fiction, especially shorter work, I found in my early books that it was like character, 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 cute things, cute things, cute things, a little bit of sizzle, a little bit of sizzle, huge dramatic twist really close to the end of the book that should have been closer to the middle. In structure, it's very important to have an, kind of an up and a down, and I have tons of videos on story structure. Yes, it's annoying as hell to learn story structure, but I do think it's important to learn kind of those essential elements of novels when you are transitioning, because you can get away with a lot of things in fanfic that you just can't get away with in books, which brings me to melodrama. This is the flip side of that conflict drama thing that I think fanfic writers are very good at. But we tend towards a soapier style, more melodrama, big dramatic things. Again, because fan fiction readers, fandom people are there for seeing all this dramatic stuff happen to their favorite characters in these worlds that they already love. It's the what if scenario. What crazy things can you do to characters that you love? But in original fiction and especially commercial work, you really have to watch the melodrama. If you go too heavy on the melodrama, it reads like fanfic. And it's kind of you're like, what does that mean? It reads unprofessionally, to be honest. You have to balance what is going to feel like genuine and earned human emotion and character moments instead of wild, crazy twists and turns and high emotional moments. Now I'm going to make you feel better. I think it's fine to have a lot of melodrama in a first draft. I definitely tend a bit towards melodrama in my first draft, but then my job in revision is to pull back to realize when I have a character screaming about something or crying and I'm like, oh, it's too much. So it's kind of learning to recognize the melodrama and part of what helps with this is just read a ton of commercially published fiction. If all you read is fanfic, you definitely get out of whack a bit in terms of your barometer and your meter of what works in fiction. Whew. So the next pitfall of being a fanfic writer trying to move into professional writing, this is more outside of craft and more in writing novel length fiction and completing it, pushing through it, without depending on the instant gratification of beta reader feedback and reader feedback, because so often in fandom, fandom and fanfic is predicated on continuously posting your whip. We've all been there, where you post a chapter a week or a chapter every few days, where you get glowing comments and people telling you to write more, and that kind of sustains you through your writing process, and this does not exist in professional writing. You might get really lucky with some beta readers or critique partners in professional fiction writing, but I'll tell you my experience was as I transitioned from fan fiction to professional writing, I just didn't have people there for me the way that I was accustomed to. Because the thing about fandom, again, this is just like your readership audience. They're there for the thing that they already love. And it can be tough to even convince your beloved beta readers of your fic, you know, your people, your writer people, to love your original fiction as much as they love your fan fiction. And you might find that a lot of those betas and friends flake when you're asking them to read your whip as you're writing it. And the hardest thing you'll ever do as a fan fiction writer transitioning to professional writing, in my humble opinion, is learn to do without this validation and instant feedback and learn to trust yourself to push through, to learn to not hate yourself when pushing through means writing something that you're not sure of or maybe you think is bad. And it's learning to push through that to push through the impatience of wanting to post something immediately to finishing something, to giving it proper time to rest, to editing it into a 
polished, proper product. This is how you become a professional writer. Fan fiction, it's on the fly. It's first drafts. That doesn't fly in traditional writing and publishing. It's not just vomiting something out and posting it for people to read. It is vomiting something out and then fixing it. Uh, no first draft is perfect. Honestly, it's fine for fan fiction. It's not fine for professional writing. And then the last pitfall kind of tough thing that I certainly experienced is breaking away from your fandom inspiration enough to actually have original ideas. Not everyone's going to struggle with this, but I did. I was so deeply entrenched in Harry Potter fandom, that was my fandom, that every idea and spark I had had to do with Harry Potter. It had to do with magic and boarding schools, and I liked Aurors a lot, I will say. Obviously, that's adult Harry Potter, but everything was predicated and relied on the char characters I loved in Harry Potter and the world of Harry Potter that I loved, that it took me several years to come up with my own organic original ideas and to draw inspiration not just from the fandom that I loved and come up with ideas that really felt like fanfic of the thing that I loved and draw inspiration from all sorts of different places and understand the market and come up with ideas that stood on their own. This said you never have to fully abandon your fanfic style, which we're going to talk more about that, or fanfic kind of heart and soul. I mean, my debut is a retelling of Jane Eyre. That's a remix right there. It's kind of like fan fiction, but more on that in a minute. So moving on from the pitfalls, what are the first steps and best practices for you to employ to start to make the transition? So the first thing kind of has to do with the breaking away from your fandom and having original ideas that have the potential to work and stand on their own. And there are a couple of different ways to approach this. You can quit your fandom and quit your fanfic cold turkey. This is not just writing, but also reading, because as I mentioned, if all you read is fanfic and you're not reading novels, you your barometer is set to fanfic, not to professional writing, and it can make a huge difference. Personally, I'm going to tell you I had to go cold turkey. I had to stop writing fanfic. I had to stop reading fanfic and throw myself into young adult fiction, into also adult fiction, just novels, novels that I wanted to write. And this is one of the ways that I learned structure. By the way, you don't have to become a crazy craft book reader. Lots of different ways to figure out story structure. Cold turkey worked for me. It might not work for you. We don't all want to abandon the fandoms that we love. These communities are very meaningful to us. I will say, I didn't abandon my community. I stopped writing fanfic, but I kept doing my Harry Potter fan con, so I didn't have to leave all my friends. But cold turkey worked for me. If you do stay in fandom and keep reading fic, I do advise that you start to work more and more novels into your reading regime. I do think it is important to start firmly planting one foot in the professional writing sphere. And as I mentioned, the next thing is going to be that getting over the validation, the instant feedback that you typically are getting from fic. I say always try to have your betas also transition into your original fic. It's always worth doing and sometimes it works out. But one practical step you can take, though again this is tough, is to seek out new critique partners in the professional realm into which you are trying to step. But some critique partners don't want to do piecemeal whip exchanges. They do want you to have a complete book and you do a complete novel exchange, but it's still worth getting involved in writer communities online and trying to find new critique partners who are fully immersed in the professional writing world. The next thing, and this kind of speaks to all of this, the, the pitfalls you're going to experience, the original ideas, feeling really heavily tied to your fandom or fandoms, and that is just the warning that it might take a few stops and starts. It might take a few different ideas, novel attempts essentially, to finally complete your first original work. And this is totally normal. Even people who aren't transitioning from fanfic to pro are going to experience this. It's common to stall the first few times you try to write a novel. But again, hearkening back to my experience, I'll tell you, once I started having decent original ideas, original ideas I felt had legs, I got between 10 and 20,000 words into three novel concepts before starting one that I actually managed to finish. But starting each of those different ideas and kind of doing the brainstorming work and trying to outline 
and kind of figure out how to write a novel taught me a little something. And I haven't abandoned those ideas forever, by the way. They're kind of tucked away in my idea file. But sometimes the first couple of ideas you come up with and the first times that you try, you're just not ready to write those ideas or to push through and complete a novel. And the key is not to give up. The key is also to try lots and lots of different ways to write a novel, to test drive a ton of different advice. And that's the thing. There's so much advice out there about how to write a novel. And the annoying thing is, is that you don't know if it's going to work until you try it. And I do think it is important to seek out tons of different advice and try lots of different things until you find your sweet spot. Don't be afraid to ignore the advice that doesn't work for you because there's a ton of it. And don't be afraid to kind of experiment and try different things. You're going to have to figure out essentially what your writing process is. And generally the writing process for writing original fiction, professional fiction, is a little bit different from writing fan fiction in large part because you are not posting it as you write it on the internet and you don't have that instant beta feedback either. So next, fully expect your first ever draft of your first ever novel, original novel, to be a mess when it comes to pacing. Remember that pitfall that many fanfic writers don't quite understand traditional novel pacing and story structure because what works in a fanfic is very different from what works in a novel. But I wholeheartedly believe that kind of whatever you need to vomit onto the page for your first novel, whatever gets you to the end, is worth it. None of it's garbage. None of it is a waste of time. Even if you end up with a book where nothing happens for the first two thirds, which is what happened to me the first time I completed a novel. A lovely friend who was from my fan fiction circle, by the way, one of my beta readers I retained, who stuck with me, was like, uh, you know, nothing happens for like 75% of the book, right? And I was like, whoo, egg on my face. And then I had to learn how to fix it. And learning how to fix it was such a valuable process for me. And in fact, this is when I discovered how much I love editing and revising, which is not really something I'd ever done in fan fiction. You're gonna have to learn how to edit and not just edit a little bit, like kind of cosmetic edits, but learn to edit a full picture based on a completed work. And it is a challenge, but it's a challenge that I ended up loving. So the next thing you're going to have to do is seek out, again, resources and advice for editing. And just like with drafting and writing and all the advice you'll find there, you'll find tons of different advice and you're going to have to experiment and play around with editing and revision advice to figure out what works for you. Generally, in this kind of first steps, best practices, what to do section, I will say that there is value in reading craft books if that's something that you are drawn to and gravitate towards. I never read a craft book before I wrote my first novel, but many people find it helpful that it really kind of unlocks the process for them and teaches them things that just you're not going to get naturally when you are writing fan fiction. Down below, I'll drop a few recommendations of craft books that I think are pretty helpful, even if I haven't read them. I have enough friends who love craft books that they've told me what the good ones are. As I mentioned, other things you're gonna have to look for once you actually have a draft are some of those pitfalls that I mentioned. You can watch my bad fan fiction writing habits you need to break in order to become a professional writer video, which I will link to down below, which outlines some of them specifically and what to look for and how to actually fix them. None of them are tried and true deal breakers, by the way, nothing is in writing, but they are all things that I realized I was doing really bad writing habits that legitimately can hold you back in professional writing. These are things that we do in fan fiction that are fine in fandom, in the community norms of fandom, that honestly are just a bit amateurish. And really that's kind of the heart of this. You're trying to transition from being an amateur writer. You write for fun and fanfic can be great and fanfic can have great value, but even the greatest fanfic you've ever read isn't going to read like a novel. Though if you do know that person who actually wrote something that is perfectly well structured and paced like a novel, tell them to start writing novels. But I have found even the best fan fiction writers I know still needed to take steps to get to this other realm of writing. Novel writing is different from fanfic writing. 
Okay, which brings me to the big question that a ton of people ask me, and that is what do you actually do with your fan fiction, with your fanfic identity? So many of us write fan fiction under pen names. What do you do with your fandom? Should you erase your fandom presence and profile, like leave it behind, or use it? And ultimately this is going to be a deeply personal choice. Also, things have changed a lot since I left fandom. When I left fandom, so this was 10 years ago, wow, when I left fanfic, I mean, it was kind of a secret shame. Not just to be like a super fan of something, but to write fanfiction and specifically to write slash fanfiction. I'm pretty open now generally that I was in Harry Potter fandom and yeah, I was in the slash fandom area, slash fanfiction area of fandom. But it's taken years for me to come to a place where I am comfortable saying that. And I'll tell you when I kind of transitioned away, you couldn't tell anyone. It was a deep secret that you kept from people. And that's how fandom was for a really long time. And FYI, if you're watching this and you are a younger fan fiction fandom person, this is why you may encounter different opinions and feelings about kind of fandom and transparency from older individuals in your fandoms. Things were different. People were shamed. People got fired from their jobs when people doxed them essentially about their fandom activities. And honestly, in many places that can still happen. As cool as it is to be a nerd now and as, you know, open as people are about writing fan fiction, even slash, it's really only kind of open in certain areas. It's still something that can definitely cause damage because the average person doesn't understand fandom, doesn't understand fan fiction. They think awful, terrible things about fandom and fan fiction. It would be great to break through some of that stigma, but it's really hard. And that can include in professional writing circles, a lot of people do look down on fan fiction. Plenty of people don't, by the way. There are agents I know who specifically like to sign fanfic writers because they love fanfic and they understand all of these strengths as I've discussed them here and know that fanfic writers can write amazing, compelling novels. But for me personally, yes, I did choose to essentially erase my fandom background, just in the sense that because I write YA, I write young adult fiction for teenagers essentially, and especially because you never know who your book is going to reach and how puritanical someone is going to be. Yeah, I don't connect my fandom name and the slash that I wrote to my professional identity. It's a personal choice I made and it's one that I don't regret. I also don't regret loud and proud waving the flag generally that I am from fandom because it was such an essential part of my life. It changed my life. It made me who I am today. All the fan cons I worked on, it's all amazing and worth it. But yes, I chose divorce. And this brings me to a case of two YA authors who chose very different paths. Because this, one of the big questions that comes up specifically is your name. Because it is definitely possible to basically use the same name for professional writing as you use for fan fiction. There are pros and cons to this, as I mentioned. So on the one hand, we have Cassie Clare. And on the other hand, we have Sarah Reese Brennan. They were both in Harry Potter fandom at the same time that I was. They are my contemporaries. I was a little bit behind them. And when they wrote YA novels and got agents and got book deals, they made two very different decisions. And by the way, in Harry Potter fandom, it's no secret that who Sarah Reese Brennan is. I'm not blowing anything for anyone. And it's one of the reasons I love her books. I adore her writing style because I loved her fanfic as well. Cassie Clare decided to use her fan fiction pen name. Cassie Clare is not her real name because so many people loved her fanfic that it stood to reason and it ended up being true, by the way, that fans of her fanfic would buy her books. Sarah Reese Brennan chose to use her real name, which by the way, I tend toward the Sarah Reese Brennan camp. I would also want to do that, that, you know, working on original fiction and writing a book you're really proud of, I want to use my real name and have all my friends and family and everyone I ever went to school with know that I wrote that book or real identity. I do use a pen name, but it's connected to my IRL accounts. My people in my real life know that I write YA. But a large majority of the people who love Sarah Reese Brennan's fan fiction never connected the dots between her fan fiction name and her professional writing name. I did, and I tell people that I know I'm like, her YA books are amazing. You should buy them if you loved that fan fiction. But I'd say the majority of her readers never made the connection. And so she lost that readership. I 
have lost my fanfiction readership. It wasn't ever that large, but I am aware that anyone who did love my fanfic has no clue that I'm now a professional YA writer. I have other friends from fandom, same thing. They're not going to use their pen names from Harry Potter fandom, partly because some of them are fun and funny little usernames that aren't real names, but people who love their fic will never know that they're now professional writers. Some of us like it that way, but for some people it really benefits them to kind of be very open about their fan fiction writing. So it's a personal choice. I will say that if you write explicit fan fiction, I would err on the side of not inextricably and forever tying together your fanfic name and your professional name. And then it's up to you whether you want to tell fans of your fanfic what your professional name is. I think really that's the line that has changed. Back in my day, the thing was you deleted all your fanfic from the internet, you made one announcement, and then if people missed the announcement, they never figured out who you were. And that's what happened to Sarah. Cassie, on the other hand, left it all out there and obviously kept the same name so people could continue to find her. There are tons of other examples, by the way. I just think those are the two classics and they were getting published over 10 years ago in a different climate. And so they made different decisions that had different impacts. Which brings me to my final thoughts, starting with the reminder, the reassurance that if you write fanfic and you love fanfic and you're good at fanfic, you have some amazing skills for writing original fiction, for writing novels. You're gonna have to work on certain areas, but you definitely have a base. I genuinely believe that writing fanfic is an amazing springboard into writing original professional fiction. However, my caveat here that I haven't quite talked about up until this point is, Fan fiction writing is definitely a style. It's a style of writing, the balance of character tropes, tropes in general, archetypes, melodrama, and so on. It's a style that a lot of readers love. It's a style that a certain kind of reader loves. But generally speaking, not always, it's not necessarily the most mainstream writing style really depends on the fic writer. So I just caution fic writers to be self-aware that your style of writing might have a niche audience, might garner just as many rejections as it garners acceptances and praise, that it's worth knowing you have a readership, but your readership might not be everyone, that you should be proud of this, to be honest, and for many readers saying, oh, they wrote fan fiction, that's an automatic stamp of approval and an auto buy for them. But for just as many people, they might not like your writing style so much. I just offer that caution because I've definitely felt kind of a divide between myself as a fan fiction writer and certain other types of writers. We both write great books, but I do feel that we have different audiences. And I just think it's good for fan fiction writers to go in with eyes wide open that you can write really great books, really popular books, but you might not ever be a literary darling, for example. And also I just want to remind you that a book reading like fan fiction isn't necessarily a bad thing except when it is. It's not meant as an insult to fan fiction because I love fan fiction, but it is just letting you know that there are amateurish things that are acceptable in fan fiction that aren't acceptable in professional fiction. And it's a matter of working on those things without necessarily completely changing your writing style, changing who you are and the types of stories you want to tell, but refining and polishing your work so that it's just a bit more sophisticated. Think of it as upmarket fan fiction. It's definitely achievable. Some incredibly successful writers used to write fan fiction. Just a few that I will name, Marie Lu, Victoria Aveyard, Mackenzie Lee, Rainbow Rowell, one of the most famous ones, and tons more who might not necessarily admit it, but I can usually tell. And that's the thing. There are far more fan fiction writers out in the world than you think there are. You are not alone and you have great potential. It just might take a bit of work to get 
where you want to go. Let me know down below in the comments any questions you have about this. Who are some of your favorite writers who you know wrote fan fiction? Anyone you suspect wrote fan fiction? What are some of the pitfalls you've discovered if you are transitioning from writing fanfic to professional writing? Give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and I will come up with more videos that kind of touch on the topics of fanfic and professional writing. It's something that I'm proud of, but also hyper aware of, and I like to help fellow fanfic and fandomy people make the transition. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, I post two to three times a week. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and happy writing!